Hey, this is Rick Kaselich, injury specialist from exercisesforinjuries.com. In today's video, I wanted to go through the best hip pain relief stretches. And I'll get Jenna to demonstrate the first one and I'll help her out with the first one. And I'll then end up going through it in detail and then also showing you the other five, um, you know, best hip pain relief stretches. Okay, so this ends up being the first one, and what it is, is the tubing hip pull. So you end up getting loop tubing like this, which you can pretty much get at any, more or less at like a fitness store or fitness equipment store. Now you take the loop tubing, you loop it around something that's secure. Uh, I won't be around to hold the tubing, but you can hold like around the couch or a piece of equipment. And then what you end up doing is you just have it kind of wrapped around your ankle. So I've gone, I've gone underneath, crossed over, and then we get some tension. And then Jenna moves back till she gets a comfortable stretch. So she scoots back to a point where she's starting to feel a comfortable stretch and a comfortable pull in that hip. And then she's going to rest there. And so what she's looking for is a, like a pull or a light stretch happening in that hip joint. Uh, the tissues around the hip joint and the muscles around that hip joint. She's going to hold this when it comes to sets, reps, time and intensity. She's going to end up doing two sets, uh, time, uh, repetitions. She's going to, I mixed it all up. So one set, two repetitions. Uh, she's going to end up holding for about 20 seconds and the intensity ends up being light. She's looking for a light stretch uh, happening in the, in the leg and into that hip joint area. She would end up alternating back and forth. Um, if she doesn't want to take the tubing off and put it back on, it's fine to do it both on the same leg. But what she would end up doing is kind of scooching forward, decreasing the pull on that hip, okay, for a little bit of a rest, good. And then she can go back uh, into that stretch again. Good, perfect, excellent. So that ends up being the first one when it comes to a hip pain relief stretch. Now going into the second one, we're looking at a standing knee to chest and leg back. So Jenna has her hand on the wall. She's going to pull her left knee up, pull it as, as high as she can, good. And then she's going to let go, straighten and bring that leg back. So what we're really doing is taking that hip through full range of motion. So we're working on stretching it at the top point and then bringing it back and stretching it out the back point, okay? I got the hand on the wall because we're not worried about balance. We're worried about uh, working full range of motion, stretching the end points at both movements. So when you bring the knee towards the chest and then also bring that leg back. When it comes to sets, reps, time and intensity, sets end up being one, repetitions end up doing, uh, ends up being five, time, smooth controlled movement and then holding each of the end positions for a couple seconds or a good stop as I say. So one to two seconds. The intensity ends up being light. We're looking for a light stretch happening at, the, at both end positions of the movement. So that ends up being the second one. Now the third one ends up being the 90-90 hip flexor stretch. So good, you're taking a step forward, uh, kneeling down. So if we look the front leg at the ankle, knee in the hip ends up being at 90. And the back leg, we have the hip knee uh, and ankle at 90. A key thing to remember is you really want this ankle, you want the foot flat in order to get uh, more out of the stretch. Wearing shoes is fine, but you'll get more out of the stretch if you take shoes off and you have that foot f even flatter. Now, what Jenna's gonna do is tighten up the abdominal area, tighten up the glutes, bring the hips forward, and then what she's looking for is a light stretch, and you can kind of put your hand like that there. Looking at stretching front of the thigh, front of the hip, and it may even carry into the abdominal area. So that ends up being the 90-90 hip flexor stretch. When it comes to sets, reps, time, and intensity, what she's going to end up doing is one set, repetitions two, alternating back and forth on both sides. If one side there is no hip pain, I still recommend doing it on the non-hip pain side. It'll be great for hip joint health but also will end up being great when it comes to preventing uh, hip pain or hip uh, injury. 
um, when it comes to time, we're looking for a light stretch for about 20 seconds. Intensity ends up being a light stretch uh, that we're looking for in, it could be in the thigh, hip joint, and like I said, in the abdominal uh, core area. Now, a common thing that people end up saying to me is, hey, I can't kneel down, or when I kneel down, it bothers me. You can try to place something underneath your knee, kind of like, uh, the, like the towel or even a mat under the knee. That will end up helping when it comes to going through the 90-90 hip flexor stretch, or you can try this alternative exercise. So this ends up being the fourth one, and this ends up being a standing hip flexor stretch. So with this one, you're, you're, we'll get you to face this way. You know, take a, a good step forward. Good. And maybe I'll get you to switch legs. Good. Take, yeah, there we go. So taking a step forward. So the front leg, it's not straight, it's slightly bent. We have this back leg here. On the, your, the front leg, it's flat. The back leg, you're kind of on the balls of the, of the feet. Knees, knees bent. And then you're going to do the same thing as we did with the 90-90 hip flexor stretch. Tighten up the abdominals, tighten up the glutes, bring the hips forward, and then we're looking for a light stretch through the thigh, hip, and it can carry on to the abdominal area. Now you've kind of taken away the kneeling part, um, which people find easier on their knees to do. Now when it comes to sets, reps, time, and intensity, sets end up being one, repetitions end up being two, time, we're holding the stretch for 20 seconds, and the intensity ends up being light. Now, people ask which ends up being better, 90-90 hip flexor stretch or the standing hip flexor stretch. I find the 90-90 ends up being more effective. So if you have no issues kneeling on the floor, um, then I would end up going with that stretch compared to the other one. Now the next one ends up being kind of a variation of the standing hip flexor stretch. So you're gonna start in the standing hip flexor stretch position Okay, so we've gone through everything, the starting position when it comes to the flat front foot, slight bend in the knee, other leg back, ball of the foot, knee bent, tighten the, glute, tighten the abdominal area, tighten up the glutes, bring the hips forward, and then what we're going to do is bring the arms into it. So Jenna's going to bring the arms out so they're touch below shoulder height, and she's going to twist in. Good. So she's going to take her upper body and twist in, and that's going to target the hip flexors in a different way uh, because the hip flexors end up functioning in the hip in all three planes of movement. And a typical 90-90 hip flexor stretch, we're pretty much just focusing on one plane of movement, uh, the, the forward direction movement. Now with this, we've done forward direction and we've added rotation or counterclockwise rotation. Perfect. And, when it, and then what she would end up doing with this one, so we've done the standing hip flexor stretch twist in, she would end up doing the other one, which would end up being standing hip flexor twist out. So you twist out, hold this for a few seconds, then she goes back to the middle, and then she would end up going to the other side as well. Good. So that ends up being the standing hip flexor stretch twist in. So you're rotating in, so away from the leg that you're stretching, and then twist out ends up meaning you're twisting that upper body uh, towards the leg that you're stretching. For both of them, when it comes to sets, reps, time, and intensity, sets end up being uh, one, repetitions, I would, with this in and out, I would end up doing like five repetitions each side, so a total of 10. When it comes to uh, the hold, you would hold for a couple seconds at the end position. I would say a good two or three seconds or a good solid stop that you'd end up doing. Intensity ends up being light. We're trying to target the stretching out the hip flexors in a different way compared to, um, you know, compared to the regular 90-90 hip flexor stretch or the standing hip flexor stretch. So uh, there you go. Now, with all this talk in this video, I've really kind of focused on the hip flexors, but what I find is the hip flexors tend to be the most common muscle in the hip that ends up causing hip pain. So what we want to do is do stretches that end up targeting that hip flexor and that ends up providing hip pain relief. So there you go. I hope you enjoyed this video and enjoyed the six hip pain relief 
stretches. Now, if you are suffering from hip pain and want some of my other best tips and tricks when it comes to overcoming hip pain, then I recommend you click right here. I have a brand new free report called Five Tricks That Fight Hip Pain and Tightness. Just click right here. Let me know where to send that brand new free report and I'll send you that brand new free report right away. Now, if you're watching this on a mobile device, tablet, or a smartphone, head down below in the description and click the first link, which will end up being exercisesforinjuries.com forward slash hips. Let me know where to send the report and I'll send you that report right away. Now, if you got benefit from this video, make sure to like this video. If you have a question or comment for me, you can leave it down below in the comment section. And then lastly, hit subscribe in order to get future pain relieving videos.